So how do you install the wheelie guard on the Suron X? That's coming right up. Hey everyone, my name is Rick Cordero. Welcome to Run Playback, where we help you with video and tech tips to lead a more efficient and affordable lifestyle. Let's be creative and save money at the same time. In this video, we'll check out the Short Fuse Wheelie Guard on the Suron X. The Wheelie Guard is like a cheat code to help you learn how to wheelie faster. Can this help us learn how to wheelie faster? Stick around to find out. Okay, here it is, our grit shift wheelie guard. This is the wheel, some hardware. This part attaches to the swing arm. This attaches to the wheel. We got this uh, T-nut and grit shift actually walked us through how to install this on the Suron. Next, we have the Surant Shop lowering brackets. And these actually came in 10 days uh, from Russia. And I used the economy shipping and the communication with Surant Shop was really good. Definitely looking forward to installing these things and getting the bike a little bit lower, uh, just so we have a better center of gravity on the bike. 64 tooth sprocket. This will increase the torque tremendously. Installing the Saran Shop lowering brackets is pretty straightforward. You just have to take out the screws from the seat brackets first. You'll have to remove the plastic cover on the locking piece, but it remains fully functional. Be sure to attach the lowering brackets to the original seat brackets first. Once you have the left side installed, you can install the right side. Installing it on the right side will take a little bit of force to get it to seat correctly. We used a rubber mallet to push the brackets closer to the threads. Once everything is aligned, you can screw in the bolts and attach the nuts. To clean up the wiring on the left side, just use some cord wrap. Finally, tighten the bolts on the battery cover locking piece. The seat lowering kit actually drops the seat about 1.8 inches and extends it backwards about 0.8 inches. Okay, now we're gonna install the short fuse wheelie guard on the Suron X. Let's just go over all the things that we'll need to do this. First, we'll need the short fuse wrench. This comes with the kit. A six millimeter Allen wrench, 14 millimeter wrench, 14 millimeter socket wrench, and a 12 inch adjustable wrench. Here are the parts that come with the kit. We have the main bar right here. This is a clamp bar along with the rubber spacers. These are the clamp bar bolts and nuts. This is the main pivot bar and wheel. This is the short pivot bar, the spacer, and the bolts, nuts, washers, and pins to attach the short pivot bar to the long pivot bar. Now the most important part of this kit is this M12 T-nut. So when you order this kit, make sure that you get the M12 T-nut. Comes with the T-nut, the nylon nut, as well as these two big washers. Now the one thing that you'll actually have to get from the hardware store are three 12 millimeter washers. Now the reason you need these 12 millimeter washers and three of them is that they fit into the alignment block of the Saran. So what this does is it makes it flush so that the T-nut can fit through it and then this uh, nut will go on top and sit flush against the alignment block because as you can see, there's an angle right here. So we wanna add these washers to remove that angle and make it straight. First, we're gonna install the T-nut on the Suron axle. Now you'll notice that the Suron axle is really, really short. And so that shouldn't be an issue, but um, you really wanna use as much space as possible on this thing, um, which will be tricky because you do have to install this alignment block and again, these three washers to make it flush. Okay, so we put the alignment block on. One, two, three washers. So now that you have your washers on the alignment block, we're gonna install the T-nut and just turn it by hand and you'll see that it is flush and it's not uh, curving in 
um, against the alignment block because there is a angle over here. So now we want to tighten that and we're going to use the six millimeter Allen wrench on this side and then the big uh, adjustable wrench to get it right here on this collar. You don't want to get it too tight, but you also want to utilize as much as the axle as possible. So that feels good. Now you want to take one of these big washers here, stick it on the T-nut, and now we can install the main bar. So this is the main bar for the wheelie guard. Now, typically on a dirt bike, it would actually go on this side of the bike here. You'll notice that you can't actually install it on this side because the chain and the sprocket take up too much room over here and uh, there's just no space to clamp it on. The trick is to reverse it. So instead of it sitting this way, like that, we're gonna turn it this way. And so the graphics uh, will be facing towards the bike. We want to align it into one of these holes over here. Uh, we chose the second hole from the left um, just because it feels like the best angle to attach to the swing arm. You have a lot of space here for the clamp bar and the screws won't actually get in the way of the spokes or the wheel because the screws are actually kind of long. So this, this feels like a good place. You also have enough room for this arm to come out past uh, the wheel. So when you install the pivot arm, it won't get in the way. We're gonna take our M12 bolt, the other washer. And we're just gonna tighten it a little bit, but, but not super tight. This is just to keep it in place. Okay, so we can still move it around here. Next, we want to install the clamp bar. And the way the clamp bar attaches to the main bar is actually going to be from this side, like so. And the holes that you're going to use to attach it is here, the first one, and then the last one. So that's what it's going to look like. Now, since this is going to kind of sandwich between the swing arm and the main bar, you want to use these spacers, these rubber spacers. So this actually protects the swing arm uh, it doesn't like scratch it or bend it, and so it's gonna kind of sit like that. Since there's more room on this side, uh, we're gonna put two spacers on this end and then one spacer on that end. So we'll put spacer one here, like that. And you can see that it's already kind of a tight fit. And we'll, we'll put the other two spacers back here like that. Here's the bolt and the nut. I have some extra washers here, so this didn't actually come with the kit, but I have three washers that kind of sit uh, over here. Now, the reason I did that was just because I didn't want the bolts to kind of touch the wheel. They won't touch the wheel. You don't actually need this probably, but I just had these lying around just so that the bolt sits you know, further out and doesn't get too close to the wheel. So the way this goes is you put it in and then you take this spacer and this spacer goes in between the swing arm so that when you clamp the bar on, this kind of like pushes out the rubber spacers and then you put the other two spacers on. You also want to make sure that you put the brake line above all of this stuff right here. You don't want it to be sandwiched in between the clamp. Okay, and the same thing for the bottom. I have three washers here to bring out the bolt. We put it through the first rubber spacer. Put this spacer in the center and then put it through the two rubber spacers. And now you wanna install the clamp bar Push it in from the top and then push it in from the bottom. And now we put the washer and the nylon nut. We'll 
I'll just hand tighten it here and then hand tighten it on the bottom. Now we'll take our wrench and our socket wrench. Okay. Feels good. And then we'll just tighten this up. All right, so the main bar is now installed. Next, we want to install the pivot bar. There's actually uh, instructions online on the Short Fuse website to show you the order of all these things. The bolt here, washer. There's another washer. There's a locking washer after that. There's a nut that attaches, that sandwiches basically this bolt so it doesn't move around. Two more washers. There's like a hollow axle that goes inside of the wheel itself so this thing can spin around. And on the other side, one more washer and then a nylon nut. It's not perfectly centered when you put this on, but um, it works fine. So this is a spacer that kind of sits over here. This goes over here. And basically this sandwich is in between the main bar like that. So you're gonna have these three bolts. You're gonna have these three washers and three nylon nuts. So the bolts go like that. And the washers on this side where the nut is. Same thing over here. And then the last one, washer and the nut. So you do wanna tighten these, but um, if you get it too tight, it would actually make it really hard to sandwich it in. So my advice is to tighten these two screws and then kind of leave this one loose. And we'll just tighten this up just a little bit. We can finalize everything later. Leave it a little bit loose. So this is the main bolt right here. You have the nylon nut. You have this locking washer and then you have this main washer. So they go in this order when you install it like that. So I'll push this through. The main bolt in, there's a kind of a square right here. I'm gonna match that up so it locks in. You hear that click. And then on the other side, put the main washer on like that. Locking washer and then the nut, nylon nut. Okay, so we just hand tighten it. You can see it's already holding. So this is um, how you can adjust it. You can move these up and down, and then you could find the holes to put the pins inside of. And the pin goes in like that. And then this locking piece just goes on the back of it. and just holds like that. Same thing here. And this just locks on the other end. And now we just make our final adjustments. We just screw everything in. I'm going to tighten the main bolt. I'm going to make sure everything's nice and tight because this will need to support your weight and the weight of the bike. You have done that yourself! Now it is kind of pricey but I think it'll save us in the long run from you know damaging the bike and you get what you pay for these these parts are super heavy duty really high quality we did have some training without this wheelie guard installed this is not going to just instantly teach you how to wheelie that's not what this is for it's just to accelerate what you already know so yeah let's take it out do a demo and see if our experience level can increase dramatically in just a day We got my buddy Chris out here rocking the camera. We showed you how to install this on a Saran and now we're just gonna test it out. You can change the angle 
uh, depending on your skill level. And we're still very much beginners. There you go. Did a little one. But we're just gonna try some baby wheelies for now, just to see if we can actually touch the wheel to the ground without freaking out. And then if we don't freak out, we'll raise it up. I do feel the wheel hitting. Did it touch the ground? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I think I need to raise it up higher. I think it's a little too low. It's preventing you from sort of getting to the sweet spot. It's cool to see how it like catches you and prevents you from accidentally uh, you know, putting too much power too soon and having the bike go out from under you. And what's really cool about this kit is once you take these pins out, you can just move it. That's where we can go. All right. Even though this is kind of a shortcut, it's still, it's still just a tool, it's psychological, like getting over the fear so that you can hit the balance point. Such a fine line between those two things, yeah. being afraid and then <laughs> knowing your balance point. You know, if you stick with it a little bit each day, you'll be an expert. You won't need it before too long, I would imagine. <laughs> balance there for a second. Like I'm I'm feeling good at that height but I can't I can't sustain it. Let's see. confident. Ah, it's a workout. There were some good looking ones in there. I mean, I don't want to be the one to push you, but I feel like you could raise it up a little more. See how this feels. The first one you did looked I, like you were able to balance yeah, I think for, it, for it a second. It was somewhere there. It, like I felt it for a second. Like your instincts are like, no, 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 yes. Okay, now, I'm, now, I'm like, now I'm like overthinking it. This battle has been with you from before you know. Yeah, nice one. That was a very nice one. So during this training session, I actually felt much more confident and less afraid of looping. The wheelie guard was definitely boosting my ability to find the balance point faster. This might be the angle where I'm going to learn the most from. Yeah. I think if I keep practicing on this level, I think we'll be, yeah. we'll be at a good place. If you practice every day for like five to 10 minutes and just like, you know, go hard, it's almost better than not practicing throughout the whole week and just putting five hours in one day and just like exhausting yourself. Woo! <laughs> I got scared, I got scared. I should just, I gotta keep it back. Ah, touched. There you go. There you go. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to like sustain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
somewhere there. Yeah. Looks like looks like a brand new tire. <laughs> That's a good thing. Whoa! Woo! Alright. I'm good. That's it? Yeah. That was good. That was good. So that's our first look at the short fuse wheelie guard for the Suron X. Big shout out to Manny and Josh over at Grit Shift for walking us through the wheelie guard install. We'll definitely continue using it until we've mastered how to wheelie. And honestly, if we can learn how to wheelie, so can you. If you want to dive into more video and tech tips, click the links on the side and remember to like and subscribe so we can help you find tech deals that fit your lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next video.